when a narcissist realizes you are not controllable anymore, they have no more use for you, which is great, <laughs> right? When he knew he couldn't control me anymore, that's which is awesome, right? Once I once I'm like, oh, okay, no, no, dude, I'm I'm on to your little games here, your little head games, mind games, emotional games. He he focused his efforts and energies on the people that that he still had wrapped. And he still does. There's some folks on his business team that have been with him for a long, long time. That's my encouragement, y'all, is grow your EQ to minimize or prevent people and or organizations, companies from controlling and manipulating you or your family, your loved ones, something like that, so that you can you can have your eyes wide open, right? And have the tools, the tools necessary to recognize it and do something about it. Welcome to the EQ Gangster Podcast, where you will learn practical tools to grow your mental and emotional health and intelligence to be the best version of yourself, both at work and at home. It is real, raw, and transformational. The journey of emotional growth isn't easy, but it's worth it. I believe in you. EQ gangsters, what is going on? So this is going to be a super duper interesting episode, kind of out of place. It's going to feel out of place in the lineup, uh, but there's a specific reason. So first, let me share what I'm thankful for. So super thankful for rain and storms to appreciate, you know, for me, it gives me a perspective of the power of God in the nature that he created. And there have been a number of tornadoes and hurricanes and big giant weather systems that have been going through. And it, it's just, it's, man, it's the, the, the power of nature and the power of God in nature is just, is, is amazing. I'm so thankful for water and different streams and waterfalls. I'm thankful for music. I'm thankful for different kinds of music. I'm thankful for smells. I'm thankful for, if you've been following me for a while, the smell of pine needles. I've got, <laughs> I've got a little, little pine branch that I kept. And so anytime I need a little dose of pine, for those of y'all that are on, <laughs> on YouTube, you can see I just smelled this awesome, awesome little pine needle. I'm thankful for art. I'm thankful for different expressions of art. I'm thankful for people that stretch me. I'm thankful for growth. I'm thankful for different styles of leadership and different perspectives. I'm thankful for accountability. I got held accountable. Well, man, with, so a number of y'all know, right, we're, we're merging EQ Gangster and Arrowhead Leadership Consulting for the corporate umbrella piece, for the corporate leadership work that we do. We are merging our two companies. That's my classmate's company, Eric Lopez, and, and then my company, EQ Gangster. And I'm still keeping the podcast and the YouTube and stuff. And 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 it's stretching me, being around such amazing leaders. Eric is just an amazing leader. And the leaders, the team that he has assembled is also is also phenomenal, phenomenal group of of men and women. And I'm, it's stretching me. It is stretching me. So I'm thankful for getting held accountable. I'm thankful for growth. I'm also thankful for slow days. I'm thankful for for vegging out sometimes. I'm thankful for active uh, active rest. I'm thankful for chores to do, animals to take care of. I'm thankful for nature and, and ranches and cattle. I'm thankful for all the different cultures that are out there. I love meeting people from other countries and just kind of getting their perspective on the world and and what's different and what's similar. And I'm thankful for jujitsu. I'm thankful for this new gym I found. Man, they are the white belts are animals. Like everybody is is no joke. So it's every round is is a no joke round for me. I'm thankful for cold plunges. I'm thankful for the opportunity to sow into and invest in leaders. I'm thankful for impact and influence. I'm thankful for, for failures. I'm thankful for 
struggles and challenges. I'm thankful for peace. I'm thankful for different shades of green. Thankful for books and reading. So this episode is going to be kind of connected to episode 99, <laughs> which is crazy considering we're in the 400 plus number of episodes. Episode 99 was why we burned it all down and started over again at 45 or something like that. So I was in a, as I've mentioned a number of times, in a, in a business, a very toxic environment. Uh, business that was a very toxic environment. Their leadership styles were guilt, control, manipulation, love bombing, gaslighting, fear, social isolation, relationship consequences, uh, inability to ask questions about how things were done. That should have been a monster red flag to me, but I I had no EQ <laughs> at the time. And so this episode is going to be kind of like what we didn't really go into is how we came to the conclusion that we needed to, to bounce and, and, and move on from that environment. And my wife had done research at that time on emotionally toxic or emotionally unhealthy environments. And this list of 15 things popped up. So I'm going to read off to you. You're, you're going to see me, those y'all on YouTube are going to see me read off a, a sheet of paper here. This list that she found the 15 areas that again, on how we kind of made our decision, our kind of formal final decision to bounce and pop smoke. And there were some other factors. Again, episode 99 was was the episode of kind of more things that kind of surrounded the decision. These 15 things though were the, were the other parts of that. We just got interviewed. This is how it all came about. We just got interviewed on a ladies podcast slash YouTube channel named Melissa Daughtry, Melissa Daughtry. And she is, at, at, as at the time of this recording, doing a series on emotionally unhealthy, emotionally toxic environments. And, and so she interviewed us, both me and my wife, which will be coming out soon on her YouTube channel. And so... Those y'all who, who came from there to this channel to hear those 15 things, because we said we would do that. And so this is going to be episode uh, 453. That's the background. That's the context. So if you haven't heard episode 99 and you came from that channel, from Melissa Daughtry's channel, definitely recommend you go check out episode 99 on my podcast. I know my wife has her podcast called Filter It Through a Brain Cell, Filter It Through a Brain Cell, where she teaches critical thinking to parents and teenagers and is absolutely killing it, by the way. And so episode 99 is not on her podcast. It's on my podcast. So episode 99, uh, yeah, was was on was on my podcast. So so anyway, just for, for reference, and I think I covered all my bases there. Okay, so now let me jump into the 15th. 15 things. Now, are there other areas? Sure. Absolutely. There's other areas. So this is not an all inclusive list. It was just a list that my wife found when she was doing research in this area. So anyway, so some of these may, it may resonate with your current work environment, your current job, your current business that you're a part of your, your current, maybe even military unit, because I know I got a lot of military folks here that, that, that watch this as well. So Pay attention and, 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 and yeah, just pay attention and just see if, if any of these, any of these resonate. And, and once, once my wife had done the research and said, Hey, Noble, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to run 15 points by you, 15 questions by you. And I want you to see if any of these resonate. And I'm like, well, like, and pertain to what? Well, to, to biz, the business that we're, 
working on right now. And I said, okay, no sweat. And she started to go down the list. And I was like, I said, well, I, I haven't, if that was all 15 and I think it was, cause I was, I was, we were apart at the time in different locations. I was in a different town, I think working business or I, I don't know what, we were just not together in the same place. And so when she read those off to me, I'm like over the phone, I'm like, yeah, every one of those resonates with me, right? So, all right, so number one, so the, the, the principle is the principle of submission. Point number one under submission, complete, almost unquestioned trust in the leadership. And I already told you, we could ask no questions of how the Wizard of Oz ran. And it would be defensiveness, uh, blaming or gaslighting. It would be spun back on us or you can peek back behind the curtain, Noble, once you reach a certain level in business, then you can have a better understanding, but not until then. You need to earn your, your way to that, to that level. So complete, almost unquestioned trust in leadership. Two, leaders are often seen as special individuals with special knowledge and or unusual connections to leadership or God. Because listen, abuse mental, emotional abuse and control and manipulation can happen in church as well. 100% can happen. I'm not saying in 100% of churches, I'm saying it absolutely can happen in churches as well. This helps a person give themselves over psychologically to trusting someone else for their welfare. Three, increased submission to the leadership is rewarded with additional responsibilities and or roles and or praises, increasing the importance of the person within the group absolutely happened in our, what we were doing. <laughs> Number two, primary influencer. <laughs> this is so funny. Oh man. Insistence that the partner be influenced only primarily by the leader of the group. Failure to be influenced in the fullest sense will result in being seen as bad or not worthy. There would be, there would be emotional or social consequences if you did not allow your business coach to become the primary influencer. Number three, point, big point number three, exclusivity. Their group or organization is the only true system or one of the few groups who are truly doing things right. They would say multiple times from stage, big cheese leaders do not listen to podcasts. Y'all, we're in, we're in 2024. Like, do not listen to podcasts. And this was a, I mean, this was a few years ago, but still, you know, 20, 21st century. And they're telling us to not listen to podcasts. Like they, they told us, don't listen to podcasts, only listen to content from the machine, from the, the, you know, the oracles of business, right. In, in the business system, it was very much like the village. I don't know if you've seen the movie, the village, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was eerily similar to, they would control, they wanted to control the information and the narrative. There's no valid reason to leave or do something different. Therefore, anyone who does leave will have their character questioned and or maligned rather than looking at their reason for leaving and asking if it might be valid, 100%. Anybody that left, there when we left, there was a spin. And of course, oh, not only was there, there, was there a spin, you are also not allowed to talk to or communicate with the people that left. And again, we were one of those that left. Well, they uh, uh, officially, the technical, the official, they kicked us out. Now, of course, they wouldn't say this, but in fact, they never answered because we asked, why are you kicking us out? They never responded to us. <laughs> they never told us why we were getting kicked out. We were questioning how they were doing things and they didn't like it. And they knew we had disagreements with how they were doing things. And so, you, again, you can't question the machine. You, you can't question the, the, yeah, the big, the big, com, you know, uh, complex, the big industrial business complex. Persecution complex, number four, big principle number four. Us against them mentality. Therefore, when someone inside or outside of the group corrects the group in teaching and or behavior, it is interpreted as persecution, which then is interpreted as validation. Yes. Yes. Five, control. Control of members' actions and thinking through repeated indoctrination and or threats of loss, of success, status, favor, blessing. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, I thought you you wanted to be successful. Like, 
you know, Noble, you told me that you wanted to become financially independent. So, I mean, do you know anybody outside of the business team that is financially independent? Well, no, I don't. Well, why would you make decisions that would be different than how the people that are financially independent make if you want to be financially independent? Now, if you don't want to be financially independent, then yeah, do you have to do whatever, make whatever decisions you want to make. But, but if you want to be financially independent, you need to make the decisions that the people that are financially independent make so that you can be there also. So that means like, does it make much financial sense to attend your family member's wedding when you could attend a business conference instead? You're not going to learn anything at the, at your brother-in-law's wedding, um, your future brother-in-law's wedding, but you'll learn a lot at the business conference. Y'all, not even joking. We missed family uh, weddings. And I know people that missed funerals because there was a business conference because of exactly that line of messaging and thought that was communicated by multiple levels within the hierarchy um, of the of the business organization. Isolation point, big point number six, isolation. Minimizing contact of partners with those outside the group. This facilitates a further control over the thinking and practices of the members by the leadership. Again, like I already told you, absolutely. And again, if you didn't, if you didn't toe the line, if you didn't obey, there would be social, relational, business, emotional consequences. And it's super subtle, y'all, super subtle. So, I mean, some were subtle, some weren't subtle. You would be uninvited to different things. You would be treated differently within the group. You would get ghosted. Then as soon as you change your behavior, oh man, it's so good to see you. Like, do what, like, like all of a sudden, like now it's good to see me, but Five minutes ago when I didn't make the decision you wanted me to make, like, it wasn't good to see me? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's crazy. Number seven, big principle number seven, love bombing. Showing great attention and love to a person in the group by others in the group, which then helps that person transfer emotional dependence to the group. Absolutely. Now, here's what's tough for me with that point number seven there. As a, as a people pleaser addict, like, you see how how I was bred for this environment because of my emotional dysfunctions. I was emotionally needy. I, I was emotionally codependent. I was people pleaser addict. I had toxic positivity. And, and so when, when I found this, this business team, I mean, it was like a dysfunctional match made in heaven. <laughs> Their toxic environment with my, lack of EQ and therefore corresponding multiple levels of emotional dysfunction, it was a, it was a match made in heaven. I mean, it was a beautiful fit. And, 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 and so I genuinely love people. So the love bombing thing, these guys, I mean, they took it to a whole, I've never seen any organization before or since that what we called it when we were in the business was edify they edified people like I have never seen before after business, which again, unbeknownst to me at the time, is a great way, I call it pedestalizing. When you pedestal somebody, you put someone on a pedestal and now people, human beings are master idolaters, right? We can make idols out of anything. And when you put a person on a stage and celebrated and cheered by thousands of people over and over and over again. Guess what? You, I mean, these people hold a certain place in your brain. At least, again, it did for me and thousands of others. I know some of you are like, well, that would never happen. Okay, well, that's good. But to me and a thousand, a thousand of other people, oh my gosh, they're so amazing. Oh my, I got, I got, I said hi to the, I mean, it was like literally within this business team, it was 100% like a Hollywood celebrity abso freaking lutely like they would get swarmed they would get their picture taken they and and we were that to 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 you know on a smaller degree based on the levels of business that we had reached we were we were in the same you know so the the same system 
Like I, I got, I was on the receiving end of the same system that I'm talking about, right? So not only did I help perpetuate it, like I, I benefited from it. And so, and, and have since then had to call and apologize to many, many people because of, of this whole thing. Now that I have since realized and discovered the emotional unhealthiness of all this stuff. So love bombing. Number eight, special knowledge. Instructions and or special knowledge is something that only the leader has. This leader then informs the partners, members of the group are not empowered or told that they can learn or figure out the special knowledge for themselves without the leader. Members of the group are not empowered or told that they can learn or figure out the special knowledge for themselves. Yeah, yeah, without the leader, yeah. So, it, I mean, it was it was all about that pedestalization or idolization, idol, idolization of the leaders that they would consistently put and parade across the stage that would be doing the programming. And again, we were one of those leaders that, that, that they would do that. And again, I, I've had to since apologize to many people. I had no idea I was doing all this stuff. I had no, because of my EQ, I had no awareness. I had no self-awareness. I had no social awareness. I didn't know about any of this stuff. And so I, I again, it, it was a, a, a perfect dysfunctional match made in heaven. Number nine, big principle, indoctrination. The teachings of the group are repeatedly drilled into the partners, but the indoctrination usually occurs around special knowledge. The teachings of the group are repeatedly, yeah. The messaging, I'll give you one, I'll give you a message that we heard every single weekend. No, 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 that's not true. Every every weekend conference, so every quarter, we would hear somewhere in the conference would be these principles. Submission, unity, and power of the spoken word. Submission, unity, and power of the spoken word. Now, are those three principles, are they are they real principles? Are they real powerful principles? Absolutely. Are they are they good principles? I, I, I think they can be. The concept of submission by in and of itself is not a bad concept. The concept of unity is not a bad concept. The concept of the power of the spoken word is not a bad concept. They are good concepts. When they are incessantly drilled into you every quarter and on almost every single internal podcast episode, we call them audios, right? You are getting indoctrinated with, oh man, I've, I've got to be in submission to my chain of command. I have to be unified with my chain of command. Um, and you got to be positive. You got to speak positively. Well, that, I mean, think about the programming. Think about the consequences of that. You, you couldn't, you couldn't say you had any issues or challenges or negatives or unpleasant, uncomfortable feelings or thoughts because that's not, that's not the, a good use of the power of the spoken word. And you're, you're kind of being a little bit disunified because everyone else is positive. And, and, and they're dealing, they're, man, they're, they're, they figured it out. So why, what's your deal? Like, what's going on with you? Right. And then submission, like, you know, you can't, I mean, again, you can't question because you got to be in submission. I, I, I'm telling you all, it was, it was mind boggling. Okay. Number 10, big principle view of success. Success is ultimately achieved through association and or submission with the group, its authority and or its special knowledge. And we heard that also many times, like, hey, if you leave this organization, you won't be successful after this. Like, just so you know, if, if you quit, if you leave, sorry, but your 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 whole life is going to be terrible. You'll probably get a divorce. You'll probably lose your job. Like, they would say this stuff, y'all. They would actually say this stuff. So if you want to be successful, you, you got to do it within this with these parameters within this organization. Number 11, group think. Oh my, I, I can't even tell you. <laughs> you literally, you had to walk, talk, think, dress, dress the same. There was a dress code. I, I mean, y'all, it was, 
yeah, groupthink, masterful, masterful groupthink. The group's coherence is maintained by the observance to policies handed down from those in leadership. Absolutely. So, so 11 is groupthink. That was point number one under groupthink. Point number two under groupthink. There is an internal enforcement of policies by partners who reward proper behavior and those who perform properly are rewarded with further edification, inclusion, and acceptance by the group. So, oh man. Yeah. Oh, here's another one. That you, There's a few other mantras that were regularly communicated. No negative downline or crossline. No negative downline or crossline. They did not want you building relationships with people to your left and right. And you definitely could not say anything negative down again, down on your team or to your left and right. So no negative down on a cross line. Always check with your business coach before doing anything for the first time was another mantra. And then never mess with somebody's ego, money, or spouse, which but that's that's legit. <laughs> so, you know, but but again, those those other two. I mean, th again, think about the emotional and social consequences of these mantras. I'm talking; these are DNA level. This is not like oh, they'd say it once a year. I I'm talking you would hear those mantras, I would probably argue a hundred times a month through some form of messaging. The podcast episodes, the conferences, the business team leadership, you were getting inundated with these with these messages. So groupthink, I mean, it, I can't, I cannot think of a better organization that, that masterfully rocked, crushed groupthink than these guys. 12, cognitive dissonance. Avoidance, so point number one under cognitive dissonance. Avoidance of critical thinking and or maintaining logically impossible beliefs and or beliefs that are inconsistent with other beliefs held by the group. Avoidance of critical thinking and or maintaining logically impossible beliefs and or beliefs that are inconsistent. Yeah. You know, again, as soon as we started a question, hey, what, you know, because we started to get, if you've heard Melissa Daughtry's episode about with us on there and or episode 99, when we first had, you know, when we started to grow emotionally, we were going to counseling, going to therapy. And the therapist, again, started to introduce us to emotional health, emotional intelligence, emotional growth. And so we started to learn some of this language, this emotional language. And when we started to learn and grow and apply some of the stuff, and then we went to a conference, we're like, man, this conference is hitting us different because we had never grown in that stuff before. They don't teach you emotional intelligence and emotional health in these organizations. At least the one we were in, they did not. Why would they? <laughs> they want to control you, right? They don't want you to grow emotionally. So... So, and again, you can't, you cannot think for yourself. It is, so, so when, when, when we started to ask questions like, Hey, this, this conference is hitting different. This is kind of rubbing us a little sideways. Here's another one. You, you know, you need to, we, we don't recommend you start a family until you're financially independent. No joke, heard it a lot. Well, and so consequently, now it was our decision, of course, right? It was our decision. And when you think about the environment I just told you they created, well, when the big cheese, the financial independent people tell you that, we, we waited. We waited to have a kid. And 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 that's a whole nother, won't talk about that, but that's a whole nother ball game. And so, again, it was our decision. Our decision. And they, yeah, they, they capitalize on the ability to control and manipulate people who are not emotionally intelligent. I would tell you that right now. And so a lot of people don't start families until they're financially independent. And when we started to ask questions, we were immediately gaslit, immediately gaslit. And, and again, we were not like newbies in the organization. We were in the top 0.01% 
of the company. And yeah, yeah, anyway, that's so number two under cognitive dissonance, avoidance of and or denial of any facts that might contradict the group's, group's belief system. Absolutely. Cognitive dissonance. Number 13, shunning. Absolutely. Those who do not keep in step with group policies are shunned and or expelled. Those who do not keep in step with group policies are shunned and or expelled. A hundred percent. And again, that narrative is created. The spin is created because, you know, they lost their dream. They lost the call that God placed on their life. Oh man, they must be slipping away from God because, you know, if they were closer to God, they would have, they would be dialed in more with their dreams that God has given them. The calling on their life to be financially independent and prosperous, right? Crazy y'all crazy. And then again, out of, so 24 years, I built relationships with hundreds and hundreds and probably close to a thousand people, like legit over, I'm a people guy, y'all. 24 year, 23, 24 year career in this organization, legit built relationships. And I thought, oh my gosh, these are lifelong homies. Oh man, these are Oh, so my best friends ever. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Right. I was, oh man. And then when, when we again, started to, to lose our way, which means get emotionally healthy, started calling them out on their emotional control, manipulation, guilt, fear, condemnation, and gaslighting. They, they weren't hearing it. They kicked us out. How many people do you think kept in touch with us? We said this in the Melissa Daughtry episode. One guy. One guy from New York, <laughs> one guy from New York. Yeah, I kept in touch. Uh, shout out. Yeah, shout out to you, brother. Very, very thankful for you, man. He kept in touch through the thick and the thin. One guy out of out of probably, yeah, getting close to a thousand people that I built relationships with over 23 years. And uh, one guy, which is more confirmation that we made a great decision <laughs> to bounce. So shunning is real. Number 14, gender roles. Control of gender roles and definitions. There were fairly clearly delineations between what I was supposed to do and what my wife was supposed to do. And and let me say it this way too, they strongly, strongly, and I say they, we, because we, we were a part of all this, strongly um, encouraged, recommended that couples get in business. We did not recommend that a couple that only one of a couple get in business. It was either husband and wife or nobody because the chances of a husband or a wife building it without their spouse was rare, rare, rare unicorn status. So we, we did not recommend it because the spouse who is not in, involved is going to steal the dream is what we would always say of the person who wants to build a business. And then appearance standards. I already told you that one, number 15, appearance standards. Often a common appearance is required and maintained. They told me the shoes I had to wear. They told me that the color of suit I had to wear. They, they strongly encouraged against or strongly discouraged facial hair of any kind. And... <laughs> yes, you had to, oh my goodness, y'all. So, so for, for me, all 15 of those points resonated very, very strongly with the organization that we were, we were a part of. And again, some of those may relate to, to some of you all. And, 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 you know, again, this is how our guy gaslit us. He's like, well, those are 15 points that any winning team would have for their organization. He's like, you know, you think of any winning football team, I guarantee you they, they fit all 15 of those areas, right? 
gaslight, gaslight, gaslight. Would not, yeah, he he had an inability to not get emotional. He had the ability to, to look at that organization objectively. Uh, he would immediately go defensive mode and not, he, he had, he did not have the capacity, the intellectual capacity or emotional capacity to take a step back and look objectively at how and what that organization was doing. And, and so his default coping mechanism, survival mechanism was gaslighting. And he's an incredibly smart guy, very, very intelligent guy. But in this area, again, low EQ, did not have the capacity to, to do that. So, so anyway, so we got gaslit. And so when, when he, you know, he was completely unwilling to, to look objectively at, at, you know, these 15 different things. And we had examples, very specific examples for each one of those 15 different things. And he, he went into the gaslighting. I'm like, Okay, this is absolutely a waste of our time because you have you're not even making an effort to understand where we're coming from. So, and, and one that's well, I think it is on here, right? But the inability to ask questions of the organization—I don't remember exactly how they said it, but however they however they communicated that, where you are not allowed to ask questions of the organization. It was in here somewhere. I don't remember what, under what point it was, but that's another big one. How about your organization, right? Are you are you allowed to ask questions of how things are run without, you know, anyone getting defensive or blaming or gaslighting or controlling, manipulating any of that stuff? So anyway, and, and here's my my thing, right? The 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 salute. Now here's the downside, right? The dark side of EQ, which we've got three episodes in in the first. 30 episodes of my podcast. My wife did three episodes on the dark side of EQ. We had a guy in our business team who wanted to learn EQ specifically so that he could get better at manipulating and controlling other people. Textbook narcissist. If you look up narcissist in the dictionary, this dude's name and picture would be next to it. And so there is a dark side to EQ. And here's the thing. So okay, that's great that this narcissist was learning EQ so he can be a better controller manipulator. I still am a huge 100% proponent that everybody should learn emotional health and emotional intelligence so that even though you have those kind of guys out there that are manipulators and controllers of other people, uh, you can be aware of it. I used to enable and empower him for the first couple of years before I learned any of this stuff. And of course he loved it. He controlled me out. He had me wrapped around his finger. He controlled me. He was master PhD level narcissist. It was amazing. But then as soon as I started to get emotionally healthy, started to learn about some of this stuff. I'm like, Oh, okay. I see what's going on. And as soon as I started to figure out what was going on, the game he was playing, um, he uh, he 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 uh, ghosted us. Literally stopped talking to us for like two years. It, that's a whole nother. <laughs> that's a whole nother story. <laughs> oh man, you know because that's the, when a narcissist realizes you are not controllable anymore. They have no more use for you, which is great, <laughs> right? When he knew he couldn't control me anymore. Uh, which is awesome, right? Once I once I'm like, oh, okay, no, no, dude, I'm I'm on to your little games here, your little head games, mind games, emotional games. He he focused his efforts and er energies on the people that that he still had wrapped, you know. He, he um, and he still does. There's some folks on his business team that have been with him for a long, long time. He still, I don't know if you guys have seen. There's a like he's the Muppet. He's the Muppet, um, the puppet master, the uh, the old puppet master. of This guy. But they're they don't mind being controlled. So, I mean, some of them are aware, I don't, but a lot of them are not aware. And um, but that's my encouragement, y'all, is grow your EQ to minimize or prevent 
people and or organizations, companies from controlling and manipulating you or your family, your loved ones, something like that, so that you can you can have your eyes wide open, right? And have the tools, the tools necessary to recognize it and do something about it. So thank you guys for listening and hopefully there was something in here that added value to you. Thank you for all your support, your encouragement. Um, greatly, greatly appreciate being a part of your growth journey and, and likewise y'all being a part of my growth journey. Remember that emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally.